All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We're back at it with another video testing out FSD beta 10.8. After our initial impressions video, we weren't too impressed. After some more driving off camera, we've actually found some things out. So we're going to test out some more complex scenarios. We don't intend to just drive aimlessly around, but we want to test out some more complex scenarios. So we're going to go from one point to another to a destination, and we're going to have it go through some specific obstacles to see how it fares against those. So stay tuned. talking about FSD beta 10.8. We've got it loaded up right here. We've got the chill profile for autopilot setup slash FSD. Uh, we've got the comfort suspension. We've got it in sport mode as opposed to plaid and we have it driving the limit in terms of our configuration. Everything else is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna dive right in. We've got a destination in. I'm gonna go ahead and activate FSD. Let it pull itself out. Pretty aggressive and no turn signal, so that's not good. But I'll, I'll give it more leeway this time. I'll let it do its thing as much as possible and then intervene when I don't feel comfortable. Did a good job avoiding that car that was over the limit line there. So that's good. Um, I found that as it's driven more, it sort of goes in between, depending on when you have it activated, uh, sort of the FSD visuals and the standard visuals. So that may be an indication of a, a potential bug even. Uh, in terms of how it operates, but it's gotten a little bit better the more I've used it. Using that regen now, also indicated by the blue line, but using the regen to slow down much smoother, much more naturally than before, which is good. I'll give it a little bit of a tug to keep it compliant, but I'm keeping my hands at the ready. You can see here, but I'm also giving it room to do its thing. When you're using the yoke, it's a little bit different than the wheel, so it's harder to keep your hand on, specifically around turns and bends, than it is of the yoke, than it is with the wheel. I'll go a little faster. I'll go to 30 just because people are starting to pile up behind me. But just keep that in mind. If you see me with my hands away from the away from the wheel, one, we're, we're pretty much... Uh, very well experienced, but also because the yoke is a little bit different than the wheel. So if you've not used the yoke, please don't comment on why we don't have our hand on the wheel or why we're holding the wheel all the time or whatever the case may be until you actually use the yoke, then you'll understand. Needs to get into this lane. Again, not signaling, not a good sign. And now it puts the signal on when it wants to make the turn. It should definitely signal at every lane change. This is something that's been consistent with all the previous builds, even 10.6.1 where it just doesn't like to signal to get into a lane, doesn't like to signal to pull out into the road, okay? One of the things we observed in the last uh, video, our first impressions video, where we were upset that it sort of went over the white line, that was that feature that they talked about in the release notes about biasing over the bike lane to make right turns. And that, you know, is cool if it's a dedicated bike lane, but if it's not a dedicated bike lane and just sort of a shoulder, I think that's not the right move to do. And now instead of waiting, it kind of is thinking about going around these cars. But it does a good job stopping at the limit line, even though we're not at the light, which I think is a good buffer to have uh, in the event that this light changes and we're not in the right place. Again, getting ready to make a maneuver around some cars, seeming pretty aggressive. Again, I'm, I'm quick to be able to grab this yoke and I can uh, intervene as needed. And I have my foot will be hovering over the brake or at the ready. Nine seconds left. Let's see if we can get over. Truck is coming. Just trying to get over. It's going to try to make it. Someone is going to run the light. Could be an accident. It's saved. I'm going to go ahead and give it the acceleration it needs to go forward because we were already in the lane and there's a car behind us. So good job avoiding the accident. Not so good in terms of the feeling of how I felt with the car sort of trying to figure out what it wanted to do. So that's one of the things we test here that's different than what everybody else does. Everybody likes to do zero disengagements, and that's the, the metric they use to, to do a sort of a binary pass or fail full of full self-driving. We don't really look at that right now. 
uh, because we're a, a car, an autonomous or semi-autonomous car driving in a world of crazy drivers. So you, anything could trigger a disengagement at any point in time. So that's really unrealistic from our opinion. What is realistic and more valuable for us is how comfortable do I feel with this car at the helm, with this car doing a majority of the heavy lifting of driving? Has to get into this right lane. Let's see what happens. Car's trying to pass us behind us because we're going a little slow. Again, didn't signal to get into that. So again, that's the really the real goal here from our perspective and our testing is how comfortable do I feel in the car? And if I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to adopt to this. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to spend the money. I'm not going to be able to convince someone else to be able to spend the money to buy FSD as an option. So I think comfort, level of comfort, level of confidence is key. And then go for zero disengagements or as far as you can go without intervening and maybe at some point fall asleep and wake up at your destination type of thing. Uh, but that's kind of what we look at here. Again, I really can't overstate how good it is to have the regen braking as opposed to the friction braking, which can be aggressive at times when you're on full self-driving. So having that regen braking slow you down provides that le extra level of comfort when it comes to, to braking for cars or braking for whatever the case may be. One of the things we also noticed in this build 10.8 is it's um, sort of oversensitivity to pedestrians. So when pedestrians are anywhere near the road or crosswalk or something like that, it is overly sensitive to try to break and anticipate or predict what it wants to do, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does provide a level of sort of phantom braking as a result. So just be mindful of that as you as you drive with FSD beta, um, that if you have pedestrians around a lot, you could see the car start to aggressively break uh, in anticipation for what it thinks the pedestrians might do. Coming up to a very interesting intersection where the ground is a little bit uneven. So lots of bumps, be prepared for that in the camera, but also it gets kind of complex as well in terms of the congestion and traffic here as well. And I believe there are also some lights that are about to go active, but they're not quite active. Here's the uneven road, make that left turn. Pretty good, pretty good job. That was pretty good. I like that. I like that. Pretty aggressive coming around the turn in terms of acceleration, but overall, I like that. Good turn. Um, lights are active now, so no issue there. Before they were covered, so they were there. The car recognized them, but didn't know what to do in terms of whether they were green, yellow, or red, but they were covered. So far, so good. That was one challenging point. The other challenging point here that we have coming up in addition to the congestion is going to be a roundabout, which I've actually never tried on FSD. I've seen other people try it. Uh, other colleagues and friends of mine have been in the car when someone actually tr tried it, but I've never tried it myself in the driver's seat. Uh, so this should be interesting. Wish me luck. Hopefully this isn't our last trip on <laughs> FSD. Here you can see the intersection. It's not top down. It should really be top down. Model 3 and Model Y seem to be biasing more towards the top down view when they hit intersections. The Model S and X, so far, that's not the case. They're not biasing top down. It just shows the intersection from that drone perspective, which isn't ideal. This car is hanging over a little bit. Now let's see, because it has to be in a certain lane in order to hit this roundabout in the right way. Seems a little hesitant. 
but it's not in that turning lane, so that was good. You see the traffic getting more congested. Nothing crazy. Getting over in the right lane, pretty good, pretty aggressive there. Putting the turn signal on, wanted me to stay compliant. It needs to go around and straight. Let's see what it does. I'll give it the leeway. But if it does the wrong thing, I'm going to stop it. Good job waiting its turn, waiting its turn. Cars are coming. Yep. Start it. Then it stopped. Sorry about that. So it tried to go before a car came. Didn't like that. So it didn't really pass that test. Didn't really pass that test. Into our destination. Not gonna say the name, but into our destination. Looks like it's gonna take us all the way in. Signaling for the stop sign, which is great. Now your destination is on the right. Give it some acceleration, it'll turn. Making the turn, stay on the right lane, please. Pretty good, pretty good there. All right, complete. All right, so there you have it. 10.8, more challenging conditions. Really didn't uh, have the right timing for the roundabout there. Um, and it actually tried to go right before the car came. So that could have been catastrophic had I not been able to take over and not seen this car right here trying to pull out as well. Quick reflexes. Uh, but so far, um, it's better than we initially uh, concluded. So I want to say that up front. It's better than we initially concluded. Obviously, you have a Tesla, you have to park far away. So that's us, especially with the Plaid, park far away. People will still find a way to park near you, but <laughs> park far away nonetheless. Uh, but that's it. Uh, so far, it's much better than we uh, previously assumed, initially thought. Uh, can't handle the roundabout fully just yet. Um, especially congested. Lots of cars coming through very fast. You have to be really good with the timing. It tried to jump out at the last minute in front of that car. Uh, I had to take over and stop it from doing that. It, the car beeped at me because it saw that uh, it tried to leap forward. Again, no one was hurt, no one was injured, no damage to the car, so that's a success. Uh, but again, it needs some work there in terms of the timing and how it can handle that maneuver. Okay, so otherwise, let me know your thoughts, your further thoughts. Now that you've had some time to have 10.8, or maybe you did or you didn't, uh, hopefully you did, but if you have, let us know your thoughts. What have you noticed? What have, what's different? What's better than 10.6.1? Was 10.6.1 bad for you and 10.8 is now much better or vice versa? Let us know. Uh, until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.